A well-known and respected tech CEO, Dario Amade, who heads a cutting-edge AI company called Anthropic, is raising alarms tonight about AI's potential impact on employment that could soon be felt. While he says AI can lead to incredible advancements like medical breakthroughs and boost the economy, he believes it could also lead to half of entry-level white-collar jobs disappearing and 10 to 20 percent unemployment in the next one to five years. It's something that's been talked about within tech circles for a while, but rarely so starkly and so publicly. I spoke to him just before air about that and other implications he thinks AI may have on society. Dario, you've said that AI could wipe out half of all entry-level white-collar jobs and spike unemployment to 10 to 20 percent. How soon might that happen? Let's, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. But uh, just to back up a little bit, I've been building AI for over a decade. And I think maybe the most salient feature of the technology and what is driving all of this is how fast the technology is getting better. A couple of years ago, you could say that AI models were maybe as good as a smart high school student. I would say that now they're as good as a smart college student and, and, and sort of reaching past that. I really worry, particularly at the entry level, that the AI models are very much at the center of what an entry level human worker would do. And so it's hard to estimate exactly what the impact would be. And yet there's always this question of adaptation and these technology changes have happened before, but I think what is striking to me about the, the, this, this AI boom is that it's bigger and it's broader and it's moving faster than anything has before. And so compared to previous technology changes, I'm a little bit more worried about the labor impact simply because it's happening so fast that yes, people will adapt, but they, they, they may not adapt fast enough. And so there may be an adjustment period. You are running an incredibly important company in AI and you know this better than anybody or as well as all the names we know people sam altman and others who are working elon musk and ai why are you raising the alarm because it's not necessarily i would think in your best interest because a lot of the messages we hear from at least publicly from some ai ceos and stuff is a little bit more calming these agents are going to be great in your life and yes there may be problems but writ large, this is a fantastic thing. I think the reason I'm raising the alarm is that I think others haven't as much, and I think someone needs to say it. To be clear, and I recognize it's always a difficult balance, right? I'm aware of my position that I'm, I'm building this technology while also expressing concerns about it. And the reason I'm doing both of those things is, one, I think the benefits are massive, and you need to find a way to achieve the benefits and mitigate or prevent the harms. And the second thing I would say is there are, as you mentioned, six or seven companies in the U.S., building this technology, right? If we stop doing it tomorrow, the rest would continue. If all of us somehow stopped doing it tomorrow, then China would just beat us. And I don't think China winning in this, in this technology is, I don't think that helps anyone or makes the situation any better. I, I do want to read something that Sam Altman, your former boss at OpenAI, said in September. Uh, he was saying that AI can cause significant, in his words, he said, many of the jobs we do today would have looked like trifling wastes of time to people a few hundred years ago. But nobody is looking back at the past wishing they were a lamplighter. If a lamplighter could see the world today, he would think the prosperity all around him was unimaginable. And if we could fast forward 100 years from today, the prosperity all around us would feel just as unimaginable. Uh, people went around l lighting lamps on the streets. I, I, I think a lot of people may not even know what a lamplighter is. But do you think Sam Allman is wrong? I think there are some things I agree with about that. And then there are some things that I think are too optimistic. So I definitely agree that AI, if we succeeded it, can grow the pie greatly, right? I wouldn't be surprised if economic growth is much higher than it is today as a macroscopic phenomenon, right? That, that AI allows society as a whole to be to be more productive. So I, let me, let me just say, because you, you've previously in the past said you're the fu you've described a future where cancer is cured, the economy grows at 10% a year, the budget is balanced, and 20% of people don't have jobs. That's, that's exactly what I was getting to, right? Where I, I, I agree with all the positive potential. I think that, I think that isn't wrong, but I think the quote, the quote you just flashed is maybe too optimistic, maybe too sanguine about the ability for people to adapt. People have adapted to past technological changes, but I'll say again, everyone I've talked to has said, this technological change looks different. It looks faster. It looks harder to adapt to. It's broader. The pace of progress keeps catching people off guard. And so I don't know exactly how fast the job concerns are going to come. I don't know how fast people are going to adapt. It's possible it'll be it, it'll it'll all be okay, but I think that's too sanguine an approach. I think we do need to be raising the alarm 
I think we do need to be concerned about it. I think policymakers do need to worry about it. If they do worry and they do act, then maybe we can prevent it. But we're not going to prevent it just by saying everything's going to be okay. Do we as a society even understand the potential inequalities that this may amplify? And, and also the impact just on, I have little kids, I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old. What do they grow up aspiring to if machines can do pretty much everything better? What is the, what does it do to initiative or drive or striving? And I don't know the answer to that, yes. but it, it concerns me. Let's, let's take those questions one, one by one. Those, those, those do concern me, but I do, have, I do have thoughts on them. In terms of inequality, I'm worried about this. There's, a, there's an inherent social contract in democracy where ultimately the ordinary person has a certain amount of leverage because they're contributing to the economy. If that, if that leverage goes away, then it's, it's hard to make democracy, it's harder to make democracies work and it's harder to prevent concentration of power. And so we, we need to make sure that the ordinary person maintains economic leverage and has a way to make a living or our society, our social contract won't work. And, and that's why I think it's important. During testing, your company's latest chatbot, Claude 4, was capable of what was described as extreme blackmail. Specifically, I understand it threatened to reveal an engineer's extramarital, extramarital affair when it was told it would be taken offline and, and replaced. This was a, a simulation. Were you surprised by that? And what is that? That freaked me out when I read that. What does that mean? Just to be clear and to put this in context, this was, as you said, a behavior that emerged during extreme testing of the model. So if you were to make an analogy to cars, this is you deliberately put the car on the iciest road possible, you mess with the brakes, and you do that so you can see if you really stress test the thing, then you can make the crash dummy blow up. Right. This, this isn't something that the model does in practice, in actual usage, but the reason we stress test the models this way is that's the best way to test for and prevent problems in the real world. Right. I see I, roads I do exist. <laughs> But exactly, you, you want you want you want to turn every adversarial condition up to the max all at once, right. and and it's only by testing in that way that you get the model to to not do that to not do that in the real world. So I wasn't surprised by these behaviors, but this is an example of how we have to be very careful in how we take control of AI systems. Does it? I, the obvious question is: Does that pretend AI becoming self-aware? And which could and could that lead to dire consequences? I I certainly don't exclude the concept. We have a couple of people who are actually working on this topic. Like, as crazy as it sounds, of do AI systems have morally significant feelings? I would guess that they don't right now. But when you run an AI company, these crazy seeming questions are things that you study. I would say this is probably not the case now. But again, the field is advancing so fast that. I don't, I don't think you can, you can exclude even crazy sound, sounding things like this. What are practical steps people should take to be prepared? Ordinary citizens, me, lawmakers, what do you advise? Particularly well, lawmakers, I, for, I guess, really. Let's take them one by one. I think for ordinary citizens, I think it's, it's very important. Learn to use AI, learn to understand where the technology is going. If you're not blindsided, you have a much better chance of adapting. There's some better world but at least in the short term at least for now we should take it take it bit by bit where where everyone learns to use, everyone learns to use ai better and, and that that speeds up the adaptation that is is definitely going to happen eventually but it'll be less painful if it if it happens quickly for for lawmakers i would say really 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 be aware of these issues and we're trying very hard to produce data on the economic impact not taking off the table some 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 fairly radical notions. I wouldn't exclude the notion of levying a tax on AI companies, right? If AI creates huge total wealth, a lot of that will will by default go to the AI companies and, and less to ordinary people. And so definitely not in my economic interest to say that, but I think I think this is something we should consider and I think it shouldn't be a partisan thing. Dario, thank you so much. It's really fascinating. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Anderson.